Hello, greetings again, Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs. I'm Stuart Smith and I'm going to do a repair video today on the Harked, never know how to pronounce that, that name, uh, 3500, HA3500, 350 watt amp. Not my kind of thing to be honest with you and I may not be able to repair this. Although I grew up in the transistor era, valves were way before my time, I am much more comfortable servicing and fixing valve amplifiers. They're more straightforward. And I know a 350 watt amplifier like this, it's just going to be a nightmare inside. Anyway, this one is crackling apparently, so we may get lucky, it might be something straightforward. I'm hoping it is. So I think the first thing to do is get it powered up, get a speaker connected, and see if we can hear the crackling that the customer is worried about. Then we can take the chassis out and have a look inside and see what nightmare awaits us. Right, we're all plugged up. I've got the power in going through the back and my Marshall cab connected as a speaker. I'm doing this live, I haven't turned it on yet. And turn it on, there we go. Got a huge fan. Oh, okay, well, hear that straight away, can't we? Okay, well, that's very obvious. Right, not immediately sure at the moment what that is. I'll just turn, just turn that off. So, um, from experience, this is either going to be a noisy resistor or a noisy transistor of some sort. All in all, pretty tricky to discover what's wrong with it. Um, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve that may or may not work. So, as I stand now, I'm 50-50 about whether I'll be able to, to fix this amp. So let's get it out and up on the bench and we'll have a look. Right, I've just discovered uh, to get it out you have to get this front panel off and it's Velcroed on, so that was fairly hard to get off. That comes out and then the, the chassis comes forward having taken out the four screws that hold it. And here is the chassis out and are pretty dusty as you can see and the next thing to do is to just take these four screws out here three four and the lid will come off and we can look inside all right all four screws out you're seeing it as I'm seeing it what do we have under the hood I'll just put this down Side. Right, what have we got here? Okay, first thing I notice is it's fairly old technology. So, um, that's good in some ways. Oh, it's got a, it's got a valve in it. Okay, oh, that's interesting. Well, I think we'll make that our first port of call. To see if the valve is noisy. What else have we got? Sucking great big bridge rectifier to produce the DC voltage, or some of it at least. Another little bridge rectifier there, and a load of rectifying diodes there. Um, not sure what, haven't looked at schematic here, not sure what's going on here. They could be voltage regulators, plus or minus 15 volts or something. We've got a load of op amps here all over the place. It could, it could be one of those op amps that's noisy, I've known that. And over here, look, we've got the power boards. This, this is doing all the heavy lifting. And uh, these are great big power transistors of some sort. They may be FETs, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with this amp at all. Anyway, this is the power section, and basically it's all bolted onto this huge heat sink. And, of course, the other side of that will be a fan. Uh, yes, there's a fan down here somewhere. Can't see it, but it's, it'll be there. Sucking air through this aluminium extrusion and cooling the whole thing down. It's not warm at the moment, but then I wouldn't expect it to be. So, so what's my procedure here? I think what I would like to do is get it powered up again and get that crackling noise again. And then here's, here's how we diagnose something like this. I'm going to start playing around with the preamp settings. And if the noise changes or goes away or in any way changes characteristic, then we know it's on the preamp side of the 
amp has nothing to do with the power valve. Sorry, nothing to do with the power side of it. However, if twiddling all these knobs here has no effect whatsoever on the crackling, I'm immediately going to start heading over this way and uh, see if we can diagnose something on the power board. All in all, not my kind of thing this. I don't enjoy working on these sort of amps. Um, but I'll give it a go for the customer. He's desperate actually, he's just dropped it off and he'd ideally like it back today. He, he runs a rehearsal studio and they're completely out of bass amps. So without messing around any further, let's do that test that I mentioned and see if we can diagnose it to front end or back end. That's the basic diagnostic process. Is it in the early stages or is it in the late stages? We've got to start looking somewhere and we need some clues to where we're going to start looking. Right, here we are. I've got my overhead camera finally sorted out now so that it's the right way round because before it was up, upside down and if I did something like that it would look like that to you which is very annoying. So I finally sorted that um, after about six attempts. So here we are, the amp is plugged in, the speaker's on. Let's turn it on and see if it crackles outside the chassis. I hope it does. Yeah, that's doing nicely. Great. Right now I'm going to turn the preamp. That's interesting. That's not making any difference whatsoever. Graphic EQ. Oh, that's interesting. Ah. Now when the graphic EQ... Okay, so with the graphic EQ out, that stops. I'm just going to plug a guitar in because it's gone very quiet now. I want to make sure it's still working. Yeah, that's working. Okay, so we've made a bit of progress there. The second I punch in the graphic EQ, which is this... Um, you can't really see it terribly well. There's a graphic EQ sliders here and a button to put it in and out of circuit. When I press that get all this racket. Right, so it's in the graphic EQ side of things and that will mean it's um, going to be one of the chips associated. It'll have a, a quad op amp or something associated with the graphic EQ side and my money is on one of those, one of these three chips here. I'm just going to turn the camera off, I'm going to get my head in there and have a look and see what they are. I'm almost certain they'll be quad op amps. And, uh, and then we'll take it from there. Before I do that, one thing to notice is that they're socketed. <laughs> How lucky is that? So if we do narrow it down to a chip, we can just put a chip in without taking the board out, which is a real bonus. I'll turn this off for a moment, making a lot of noise. Right, I've got my eyeglass in here. These three chips are all the same and they are all AD713JNs. I don't recognise that. AD's analogue devices usually and they make some sort of more fancy chips. Right, it's kicking off nicely now and it doesn't seem to be either of those three chips. I'll just try, these are a bit far away from the EQ, so I don't believe it to be. Oh, well, let's try this four, this, this four pin chip here. No. 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 And no. So it doesn't seem to be a chip, that's interesting. That's my estimation at this stage. We're on a clue finding trail here. There is no hard and fast decisions. We're just trying to follow our instincts. So the other thing we've got is this 12 pin plug and socket here. No need to go noisy so let's give that a little bit of a waggle. I wish this fan wasn't making all this racket. You'd be able to hear a little bit more clearly the loudspeaker but anyway no it's not that let's try some other plugs and sockets 
No. I don't think it's the valve because that's right at the front end. It's definitely something to do with this um, EQ side. My experience tells me that that is a noisy component. My first guess would be a chip, but it seems not to be. So what I'm now going to do is just spray some freezer around the components close to this EQ side of things. And uh, see if we can get the thing to calm down and get a general feel of the area where this problem is. So let's have a go here. Right, that is a pity, because nine times out of ten, well, as I say, nine times out of ten, that would calm that down straight away. And it hasn't on this occasion. Pity. Right, a little bit of a change here. I've got the EQ out at the moment. I can still hear that popping and spluttering and, uh, and grumbling away there. It's much worse when I put that in, but it's still there. With the EQ out, so I'm wondering if we've been slightly fooling ourselves, I don't know. And here's the other thing, look, when I... I'll turn this up, look. Now, so it's very loud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick this in for maximum effect, then I'm gonna turn the master down. There you go, gone. Now the master pot is here on the preamp side, it's nothing to do with the power amp side. So this noise is definitely coming from the preamp side. And there's another way we can prove that because there's a little three pin connector here going into the power amp with, with a screened lead on it. I believe that to be the output of the preamp into the power amp. In fact, it has to be, there's nothing else going into the front end of the power amp here. So if I unplug this, with the noise in place, and the noise goes. There you go. Gone. So the power amp is fine, it's just this preamp side. So it's on here somewhere. It could still be one of these chips. It could still be one of these chips. Let's just turn that off a sec. Uh, but uh, it's rare for it to be a chip which doesn't respond to freezer. When you put the freezer on, it just all calms down a bit. It becomes less noisy. Then as the freezer uh, warms up, <laughs> you start to you start to get the uh, the noise again. Well. I'm 99% sure it's not the valve, but we, we have to change it. It's uh, just so simple to do, so let's do that. Well, that's quieter. Oh. The reason I feel it's not the valve is because the valve is very much at the front end here, and this noise is dramatically affected by this uh, EQ going in and out. And, and the EQ is set flat, so it's not like we're boosting a load of the early frequencies or anything. So that's a bit of a weird arrangement here. Let's see what, what's happening here. It just holds the valve in place. I have known valves make that kind of noise. Looks quite new to me. ECC83, but anyway, what the heck, we'll pop a new one in there. This won't be it but we've got to do it because it only takes a moment.
very surprised that freezer is not calming something down. There we go. As expected, no change. But that's that's okay. We're just on a hunt for the problem. Let's pop that valve. Looks quite new that JJ, so I don't think we need to change that. So now I can't hear that noise with the EQ out. Even with my head close to the speaker, there's no grumbling, so that's a bit weird. Huh. Now that was definitely there earlier with the EQ out, but lower level. Right, so we're kind of running out of tricks. Um, a tiny bit of progress, not much. The EQ's in at the moment, and it's calmed down a bit for reasons unknown, but when I put all the EQ sliders up, that's feeding back for some reason, but you can hear that now quite clearly, the noise, but look what happens when I put all the EQ sliders down, it goes. So that tells me, of course, that the noise is before the EQ. Now, quite why the noise goes when we take the EQ out, I don't really understand at the moment. I would have thought that would just literally looped past the EQ. But anyway, there's the noise. And there it, there it is, gone. I can still hear it grumbling very slightly in the background, but of course we've got all the frequencies down now, so it's being heavily attenuated kind of tells me it's before the EQ side. Not making much progress here, I've been about uh, 45 minutes since I last spoke to you. Just nothing I can do seems to affect the noise. However, for what it's worth, I pulled the valve now and that noise is totally unchanged. So it's between the very front end section, because that valve will be very early on in the stage, and the um, EQ. So it's, it's here somewhere in this part of the circuit, but nothing seems to affect it, which is very frustrating. I've tried tapping around. All these leads here. These are good culprits to these interboard connectors, but that would that would definitely show up by waggling it like that, and that's not doing anything. Annoying. I've got the heat gun out, and I thought that affected it at one point. But it's very hard because you can hear I'm doing nothing now, and the sound. See, it's, it's gone a bit now, and if I'd had the heat gun on now, I'd be saying, oh, it's the heat. Anyway, let's just warm up this section here. Kind of inconclusive, really. I would say no. Try this section. Again, I would say no. interesting that that has gone off completely now the noise 
I don't know how significant that is. You can see you can spend a long, long time chasing your tail on this kind of problem. That's now gone to quite a low level, the noise. So what I would do normally here is wait for it to come back to a moderate level and then have another little go with the hairdryer around there and see if that does anything. As I say, it's quite unusual for this sort of noise not to be amenable to freezer spray or, or heat. 95 times out of 100, your freeze spray component and bang, the noise just completely disappears. And as the freezer thaws out, it comes back gradually, slowly, back up to the full level. Well, let's have another go. And you can see the problem. Whereas before that, something happened to cut the noise completely. It's had absolutely no effect this time. Well, I'm just keeping you up to date, really, because this is how it is in amp repair. And the current state of play is that the noise is gone. Which is extremely no annoying. Whether I have this in or out makes no difference. I expect it'll come back. Well, don't mind telling you I'm getting a bit desperate now. Um, very intractable problem, this. It's good for you to see this, because this can be how it is sometimes. Um, I'm struggling to get schematic. I haven't given up yet. But anyway, that would help. So, I'm running out of ideas. I'm sure someone's screaming at the screen now, but um, I can't hear you, unfortunately. So, what I'm going to try and do won't be easy. I've marked up these three ICs, they're all identical ICs, and I put a little dot look of um, tip X, one down below, one in the middle, one on the top, one on the top, and I've made a note of which is which, you know, one, two, three, and I plan to, say, swap this one with this one, and see if the, if the problem's absolutely identical, you can probably hear that grumbling away in the background now, if it's absolutely identical to that, then I don't think it'll be either of those two chips. I can then swap, I might swap them back, but I might just swap one with that one with that one. And again, if the problem doesn't change at all, I don't think it's going to be one of those chips. Uh, but we're really running out of options now in terms of just tracking the problem down. You can't do anything, you say. I can't take the board out, there's no point in that. What are we looking for? We need to narrow it down to something. A resistor, a capacitor, a chip or something, and then we can think about changing it. As things stand, we're on a hiding to nothing, taking the board out. We're 100% sure it's the preamp, because if I unplug the input to the power amp, everything goes quiet. So it's not a power amp problem. As soon as I put that back, we are uh, in trouble. So it's on this preamp board. I'm still confused about this A and B. Now, B has no effect whatsoever on the noise. A, I've never been able to find have, has any effect whatsoever on the signal or the noise, so that's weird. These contours, which you would think would be post the graphic equaliser, they're certainly circuit-wise they are, again have no effect whatsoever on the signal, on the noise, nothing, which is weird. But the master, boom, just kills it, kills it stone dead. And putting the EQ in and out, see that that's almost completely gone now. 
I can't hear anything. As soon as I put that in, there it is. So I'm a little bit confused. I'd have expected if it was on the graphic EQ side, these contours would do something. The master certainly does. Um, just uh, I'm a little bit of a loss. So anyway, I'm going to see. It's not particularly easy to change these chips. Normally, to change a chip, you you get a screwdriver in underneath it, and you can just lever lever up the chip, and then gradually work the screwdriver and get it out. But of course, we haven't got much access here. So I'm, I'm going to give that a go. These are the two easiest to change. Oh, I don't know, maybe not not much in it. Anyway, I'll see if I can change these two and uh, see if that makes any difference. I'm kind of clutching at straws a bit, I don't mind um, admitting to you. OK, I'd like to say that was easy, but it wasn't. I swapped these two chips here. It's a question of kind of getting a small screwdriver in and joggling it in somewhere around these caps and just levering it up. Not easy. I've taken out thousands of integrated circuits from sockets and it, you know, there's no substitute for years and years of doing it. So we'll plug it in and uh, if that's made any difference at all, that will tell us something about the chip. So let's turn it on. No difference whatsoever. That's absolutely identical. Right, now that has told us something. That has told us that it's not that chip or that chip. Because let's say that the chip that was originally there and is now there had been faulty. Swapping it to a different position would definitely have caused a different degree of noise. It would either have got quieter or louder or something. So there's no change whatsoever here. So the next thing to do is to swap this chip for that one and eliminate this chip. So let's do that. Again, not easy, but I have now swapped those two chips. So once again, let's turn it on. No change whatsoever. So I deduce from that that all these three chips are okay. We've swapped them all around and hasn't made any difference to the to the amount of the problem. I could still be wrong, there's a tiny tiny chance that one of these chips is noisy and kind of regardless of the position it gives the same kind of level of noise. That certainly is possible, so it's um jury out at the moment on that. But I'm fairly happy about that. Okay. Well, hello again. It's been a few hours since I last joined you, and I've been a few more hours on this amp. One of the more difficult amps I've ever repaired. And um, you could probably tell, tell by my tone of voice I was getting a little bit despondent with it. Anyway, I decided to, uh, well, spent about half an hour on the internet looking for the schematic. I downloaded the service manual for it, and of course, as ever, it's not the same circuit. It's similar, but not the same. The ICs here are different, and, you know, it's just, you can't, if, unless you've got a decent schematic, you can't start tracing through with a scope, which, of course, is the the logical next step on an amp like this. You go to the output of that op amp and if there's um, uh, no noise there, you go to the output of the next one. If there's no noise there, you go to the output of the next one. Oh, it's noisy! So, you know, the, you can narrow the problem down to an area. But after spending an hour or two on that with the wrong schematic, I, again, I realised I was on a hiding to nothing. So on an off chance, I googled Hart, or however the hell you pronounce it, HA 3500 crackling problem and amazingly up came a thread with exactly the same thing. Every time I put my EQ in I get loud crackles and pops. Every time I take the EQ out I, I don't, it goes away. In other words, exactly the same problem. And there were several threads on several forums with precisely the same problem. And of course the usual stupid answer, you know, have you tried tapping the mains transformer? Have you tried you know, cleaning the mains input jack and all that <laughs> just drives me mad, that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, lo and behold, on one forum, someone had said, had posted a problem, 
and then they put a little one-liner about a month later saying, found it, the DC from the uh, EQ faders, LEDs, was getting back into the signal path. That's all he posted. He didn't say where it was getting back, how he fixed it, or anything like that, but in a million years I wouldn't have started looking there. Uh, can I show you? Let's just have a quick look here. Yeah. Well, just briefly, here, here are the um, here's the graphic EQ, and each one's got an LED in it that lights up. Doesn't do anything; just looks pretty. So, because he didn't because he didn't say how he cured that problem, he didn't say. So all I did was this, that, and the other. I removed this plug here, which was quite actually very difficult to do. I was a little bit concerned about breaking this on the board, and immediately the problem went away. So I thought, hmm, could it be? Then I put a meter from ground along each of these pins here, looking for the voltage which would supply the LEDs on this sub-panel. And the only voltage was this second one in from the left here, which was 12 volts, and I thought, right, well that's got to be the, the LEDs. So I've cut, look, this one here, just chopped it, and look what happens when I plug this back in. I won't push it in all the way, actually, I'll just um, in case I want to take it out again. So we can turn it on. Oh, it is on. That was on already. Okay, there we go, that's on. We have signal. The EQ is uh, in now. We can prove that by, you can hear that, boosting and cutting. We've got no LEDs on the front, so I was right in my guess that this is the thing that supplies the LEDs, and it's completely quiet. So, and uh, so we fixed it, so I'm not going to mess around too much with this now, because uh, I've spent hours on it and I can't charge the customer for all that time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell him I fixed it and that he's lost his LEDs on the front of his graphic equaliser. Dear me, how sad, never mind. And I don't think he'll be bothered about that at all now that he's got his amp back. Just check the EQ in. Let me get that bass boost look. And EQ out, and these do nothing. So, well, uh, yeah, okay, so there you go. So I'm just going to um, make this a, a little bit neater. I could spend another hour or so and find out, you know, where this 12 volts goes, how it's getting back into the signal path. It might be something to do with this subboard. Do you know what? <sighs> I've lost the will to live on this amp, and it'll be another £75 or something for the customer. I think he's going to be happy with no LEDs on his graphic EQ. Um, so I'm going to tidy this up with a bit of shrink film, uh, shrink sleeving just to make sure these can't short out. I'm going to leave it very obviously cut like that. I might even put a little note inside, sometimes I put a note inside the amplifier saying what I've done because someone else will come in here and think well, what's, what on earth's gone on here? Um, and then I put all this lot back here, I, I undid all this and um, yeah, let's do that, let's tidy it up. Okay, a couple of little bits of heat shrink, just put them over the end like that, leaving about that much with no wire in. Oh, I must remember to push this plug down firmly. I'm glad I remembered that. I'm glad I remembered that. Just like that, kind of very obvious what we've done there. And, and, uh, and that it's been done for a reason. It's not just sort of randomly fallen apart or something. I always like to leave it so that the next person in here can have a fighting chance of seeing what the hell's gone on here. Right, there we go, just tidy that up. And um, this was cable tied around here. The other thing I need to remember 
is to plug the fan back in. You'll probably notice the noise level went down and that's because I found where the fan went and just unplugged it. Kept one noise level down. Let's just turn that on and make sure that it's still working and that the fan comes on. Yep, there's the fan. And that's working. Who flipping Ray? I'm telling you that that was a bit of a mission. Right, which way around did this go now? That way. Good. Right, you don't want to watch me put screws in, so I'll get the lid back on. And um, yeah, I think we think we're done. Well, Lorks have mercy, Governor. That was a proper caution, ain't that the truth? Ugh. Hours I've been on this amp this afternoon, and I can only charge the customer about half the amount just because it just gets too stupid otherwise, the bill. So, uh, I think that was probably quite an interesting video for you. Uh, I think it's the first one I've done on tracking down a really tough problem. We can see now why that freezer spray and hairdryer had no effect on the circuit. It wasn't anything on the main preamp board. It was coming in from the little sub board, which had the faders for the EQ on it. So no amount of freezing and heating would have done anything there. Um, I'm a little bit annoyed because I don't think I would have found that problem. I, In a million years, I wouldn't have suspected the LEDs on the end of the on, on the end of the EQ faders. I'm still not really sure what's actually causing that. I mean, how what what's happening with the voltage from the LEDs leaking into the signal path? Okay, you might get a bit of DC. What's all the noise? The popping and spluttering or whatever. Maybe there's some sort of uh, electrolytic capacitor, you know, backing that off, and that's that's gone faulty or something. Anyway, I don't think it was worth spending a couple more hours tracking that down. We just chop the lead, get rid of the LEDs. This is a studio amp anyway. In other words, it's a rental studio. People come and rent studio space to have band practices. So it's not kind of critical in that sense that, it, that it's pretty and all that kind of business. So I think we took the right decision there. Keeps the bill reasonable for the customer. And, uh, and there you go. But a um, bit disappointed that I wouldn't have found that one. And it sounded for all the world. I've heard that a hundred times. That <coughs> And it's 99 times out of 100 it's a, a noisy component, a, a diode, a resistor, an integrated circuit. Give it a squirt of freezer. When the freezer evaporates, and it kicks off again. It's not this time though, so once again, I want my 2000th amplifier, I think, repair. Once again, uh, I've learned something, and an amplifier have, has kind of defeated me in that I needed to go to the internet and fortunately someone had had the same problem and fortunately they given me a little hint otherwise I would have had to say to the customer I think I probably would have said to him look run it with the EQ out you can't use the EQ on this amp and that would have got him out of trouble anyway there you go I've rambled long enough it's been quite a long video hope you've enjoyed it as always thanks for watching the channel and I'll get you on the next video which I hope will be a little bit easier I've got a nice uh, JTM has just come in, a 1960s Marshall, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on a real amp. Okay, take care, I'll speak to you soon, bye!